earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who dwell therein. For the Lord has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord and who may stand in God's holy place? Those of innocent hands and purity of heart who do not swear on God's being, nor do they pledge by what is false. They shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek you, O Lord, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? Truly the Lord of hosts is the King of glory. Peace of Christ be with you always.
These words are trustworthy and true. Christ bore our sins once for all on the cross, swallowing up death forever. For his sake, you are forgiven, and God remembers your sin no more. Let your heart be glad again and rejoice in your salvation. Amen. Through the valleys and over the hills, down the dusty streets of every village, saints traveled with you, Jesus, child of grace and glory, those who impetuously chased after you, and those whose feet longed to turn back, those who jostled for your attention, and those who sat, who made sure little children were able to meet you. You surround us with saints, even when we don't recognize, or much less appreciate them, spirit of wonder, some live down the corner from us, while others are on the other side of the world. Some run to catch the leaves spiraling to the ground, while others make a meal for a sick neighbor's friend. For all the saints of every age, especially ours, we give you our gratitude and praise. God in community, holy in one. Amen. Our first reading for today is taken from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, a rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he may save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second reading is from Revelation chapter 21. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the new first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. 
And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who is seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again greatly disturbed came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Today is All Sight Saint Sunday, the day where we remember those whom we have loved and who have now been parted from us. Maybe it's recent, maybe it's a parting that took place a very long time ago. But regardless of when it takes place, I, f I think that we can all agree that when it's somebody who has meant something to us, whether it's because of who they were in our life and the influence they had, or because of just the fact that perhaps they were there at the right moment in our life, when perhaps we only needed them for a short time and then they left again, it doesn't really matter how long then they've been gone. It doesn't matter if it has been a few months ago or 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. When we love someone, when they've meant something to us, that, that wound never really heals. We don't perhaps notice it as much, but it never really heals. I was told once on my internship that when I sat with ladies from the quilting guild, and for some reason we got into a conversation about those, those we have loved and almost everyone sitting around that circle were widowers or widows. I asked, I don't know if I asked the question or they just volunteered this, but I do remember their response either way. They said that the idea that time heals all wounds and makes grief eventually disappear is not true. It changes, but it never really leaves. All of them, some of whom had been widows for a very long time, still missed their husbands, still wished they could be and live beside their partners again. 
They longed for the day they could see them, but they also knew that they needed to keep living in spite of the grief, in spite of the pain. And so they did, but they never forgot. The acute grief became more of a slow ache, which they lived with, but it showed to them, as it showed to me as I listened to them, that the wounds created in our heart from the loss of a loved one is something we bear for the rest of our life. But that's the price of loving someone, isn't it? We can't love without the risk that at some point in that relationship we won't be hurt. And even if that relationship itself is a good one, and we have many, many happy years together, whether it's a marriage or a friendship or a family member, whoever it may be, if that is a meaningful and powerful relationship for us, that it doesn't really matter how healthy it might be, there will eventually become a time of hurt because we are mortal. And as much as we wish we could, we can't spend every waking moment for the, from now to eternity with those we love. We know one day that we'll lose them and they in turn may lose us. That's part of what it means to be mortal. It hurts, but it also shows the importance of love. That's what a powerful thing it is in our life that its absence leaves such a hole. But then the question is, yes, it hurts, and there's a hole and a wound that won't quite close over. But as the old saying goes, it is better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. In other words, even in the absence of the one we love, we are still grateful that they were part of our lives and part of the fabric of our very being. We can give God thanks then, even in the midst of our hurt, that this was an opportunity for us a way in which our life was enriched and enlivened and made more whole because of the individuals we may well be remembering on this All Saints Sunday. In the midst of that kind of love, we hear Jesus weeping at the tomb for the one he loved, namely Lazarus. He was especially fond of that family, it seems, as he interacts with them a couple of times throughout the course of the Gospels, more so maybe than anyone else outside of the 12 disciples that were with him on his missionary journeys. He was sort of fond of this family, and so it hurt to know Lazarus had died. And yes, in John, we must acknowledge the fact that he hesitated to go in order that he could go ahead and show them God shining through him by the act of bringing Lazarus from the tomb. John likes to point to these signs as ways of showing that God is in fact present with Christ, is in fact Christ. But just because he knows what is, has to happen and has to do it in a certain order in order for the best effect to take place, in order for people to see the power of God, a, a power and a love that will not even be denied by death itself, it still hurts to let his friend die. So he weeps. He weeps because his heart hurts too. That is the price of love, not, even, not just for us, but one could argue for God. Some people like to paint God as callous, as if God doesn't care about the pains and sorrows of this world. And yet a text like this reminds us that God is anything but callous. We wonder why God doesn't parachute into the world and change all the horrors that are going on around us to change the hearts that perpetrate so much violence. But God loves us too much to do that too, to abrogate ourself, our, our free will, to basically destroy our very selves in an effort to make us do the right thing. That isn't love. At that point, that's subjugation. Slavery. If we're forced to do the things God wants us to do, forced to do them, then God is no longer a God of love, but a God that subjugates, enslaves, and takes away the very gift of free will. But it doesn't mean that that still doesn't hurt God to watch all of the horrible things that take place in this world. 
even in our own community, God weeps. God weeps for the people who are we left on the streets this winter. God weeps for the people we have lost to overdoses and meaningless deaths that could have been avoided. God weeps as hardened hearts choose to do otherwise than to love and care for their neighbors. Into this love, this remembrance of God's love and the love that we have felt for another human being, we are asked to remember today. We are asked to remember all those who shaped us and formed us and made us who we are. And it hurts perhaps to remember, but even as it hurts, we know that God has not let them go. That even as it hurts, we hurt with their absence, we know that absence isn't forever. God doesn't want suffering, God hates it when any of his, God's children have to suffer, but God doesn't let that suffering be the last word. We still hold on to the hope that one day God will make everything right, but we also know that as a person closes their eyes to this world, God claims them in love and brings them to rest in God's eternal glory, away from the pain and suffering, resting instead in God's peace and grace and comfort. We know that's the kind of God we have, the kind of God we worship, the kind of God who has claimed us and shaped us and made us made us gods. And so when we can when we're asked to remember the people in our life who have mattered so much to us, we can do so knowing though they may be parted from us for now, they rest in God, and so this parting is not forever. We can take hope in the fact that one day we will see them again, even if it aches for their loss right now. So I invite you, remembering that there is always hope, that in God nothing is impossible, that one day we trust that we will see the ones we have loved and lost again. I invite you to remember them, to remember all the ways they shaped you, all the ways in which they made you who you are, all the ways in which you saw God's love shine through them. I invite you to hear the fact that God loves each of us so desperately that God weeps for us as we go through the pains and sorrows and sufferings of this life. And I invite you too to hear that, like Christ did for Lazarus, God will call us forth from the tomb as God has called, will call all of the loved ones we have lost from their tombs. And this act of remembrance, which can be hurtful because it reminds us of the absence, it can also be an act of hope. Because as we will light candles for some of the names of people whom we've lost this year, we do so knowing that the light we Light is a symbol of God's eternal love. And because God's love is eternal, no one is truly lost. So before you move on with the next piece of this service, I invite you to pause the video, to remember and name out loud, and perhaps even light a candle for those you would like to remember this day. And perhaps light one more candle in remembrance and thanksgiving for the God of love whom has claimed us and made us God's own. Amen. We walk in light of countless faces, bright as beams of rising sun, certain as the morning chases, night in endless ages run. Turning eyes to their their shining, memory to their faithful past. Saints be now the true divining, death be now but never last. When sorrow's heavy hand has waited, loss against the greater gain, pointing down that grief sore fatted, laid in on the bed of pain.
faithful past. Saints, be now the true divining. Death, be now but never last. When joy returns with laughter singing, thanks to God for life's sweet song, let us follow after ringing, thanks to God for those now gone. Turning eyes now to their shining, memory to their faithful past. Saints, be now the true divining, death be now but never. In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. God of resurrection, you call us by name and raise us to life. Rouse your church from slumber where we have held back in fear or shame unbind us. Embolden us in our proclamation of your good news that all may know abundant life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God of creation, you have formed your world on rivers and seas. Preserve fresh water sources and the creatures who call them home. Heal places of pollution and nourish places of drought. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God of the earth, you reign over all nations and peoples. Inspire us with wisdom and discernment as we elect legislators and leaders. May they govern with justice and uphold the dignity of all people. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God of heaven, you make your home among mortals. Come alongside those who weep this day. Befriend all who are lonely, encourage those in despair, and heal any who are suffering. Abide with your faithful ones in love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God who serves, who set before us a feast of rich food, sustain our ministries of fellowship and hospitality, strengthen the hands and hearts of all who prepare and serve food for our nourishment. Merciful God, receive our prayer. On the day of all saints, we remember with thanksgiving the members of our church who have died during this past year. James Lavelle, Violet Brand, Betty Dewar, Brenda Dodman, Joan Kwasnetcha, Carrie Meyer, Ed Litke, Jim Ryok, and Ken Sador. O oh God, the generations rise and pass away before you. You are the strength of those who labor. You are the rest of the blessed dead. We rejoice in the company of your saints. We remember all who have lived in faith, all who have peacefully died, and especially those most dear to us who rest in you, whose names we have remembered here before you today. 
Give us in time our portion with those who have trusted in you and have striven to do your holy will. To your name, with the church on earth and the church in heaven, we ascribe all honor and glory now and forever. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God, Alpha and Omega, we give thanks for your faithful ones who are now at peace with you. With all your saints, we praise you for all, for you have swallowed up death forever. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. God in community, holy in one, may we never be apart from you even as we pray as we are taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Receive the blessing. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign and savior and spirit be with you today and always. Amen. A couple of quick announcements. Just note on continued um, uh, stuff surrounding the Christmas cookie sale coming up fairly quickly, November 22nd. Operation Christmas Child has commenced. Um, there are boxes available here if you need them. We have our new office manager starting with us November 10th at 10, Drianne Covey. So we're excited to welcome Drianne. Not that she's a stranger to our congregation, of course, but this is a new role for her, and we hope for many years of, of uh, time with her in that ministry and in that job, and I hope that all, all of you will welcome her in, into that new position. There's the November 30th meal um, and grand opening at camp. Um, tickets are $30 for adults, 15 for children, 12 to 18. Uh, and under 12 are free. This is an opportunity to support one of our local churches, but also the camp, and an opportunity to see some of the new renos that have happened at the camp. Of course, they're still ongoing, but um, it's an exciting step to have finally moved into that new kitchen, and it's been used now over the last couple of months by our user groups, and that's really exciting. Um, so if you want to come out and see it, this is a good time to come out for a great meal, support our church, uh, local church uh, camp, and just get a chance to have a nice evening out in a beautiful location. So consider it. Also, we have one birthday this week, um, Ron Kruger. And so, yeah, so we will say a word of prayer for Ron. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, lift up before you today, Ron. And ask that you be with him, O oh Lord, as he celebrates his birthday. May it be time filled with the blessing of family and friends. Help him to know how much he is valued, how much he is loved, and we give you thanks for all the ways in which he shares his gifts with the community around him. Bless him in this year ahead and help him to know you journey with him at all times. And that that can be a source of strength and comfort for him all the days of this year and all the years yet to come in his life. Thank you again for his presence and bless him in his year ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I hope you have a good and healthy week ahead. Um, it looks like we're really starting to feel winter coming on us, but that's okay. It was bound to come eventually. So we will talk to you again soon. Have a good week. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.